Hello again and welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at the interpolations inside Kritza. Because now we can do tuning animation inside Kritza, therefore, therefore we can do interpolations or aka easy ins or easy outs to our tuning animation. Now I did try to do this just now and it didn't quite work well. So I'm going to delete this and I'm going to present to you my bear, which is falling at this point. I'm using Twitter 5 for this, if you're asking. If you're not, now you know. Uh, this is a little animation. I'm gonna hit play to see what happens. I guess I can tell what happens. He's flying in the air. And then yeah, it stays in one place. I remember doing this animation way... Um, I'm like, am I recording? Yeah. I did this animation way before Crit 5 was released, so I just, you know, animated the, the claw over here, the claw, the claw, the claw, the cape. Um, so what I have here, I'm going to walk you through what I have, and ideally you want your animation to be on one layer, at least the animation that you want to add interpolation to it, again, the, the, the training, to, to have motion training to that animation. Uh, so here's my bear she she today your she I guess I don't know. Uh, the bear has is in a folder. In that folder I have a cape which is on a separate layer. I have the lines of the bear which I didn't name correct. I have the coloring which is in the group, and I have the shadow which is over this thing over here. Now that's the great and all. If I play this, you saw what happened. But I want to move the bear. Like right? I want, for example, the bear to exit. And then the exit the screen, right? So how I can do that? I well, if I was well, I, I don't know. I could be stupid, could be smart, but if you don't know uh, that creature has screen animation, what you will do is probably will try to move um, the frames that you see here individually to fit the motion with the rest of them, which is not idea, right? So ideally, as I said, you would like to have your animation on one layer. How you can do that? You grab and you put your animation in one group that's done over here, right? Put them on that group and then say duplicate that group, which is the shortcut for Control and J. So far, so good, right? So I already have that, which is over here. I mean, you don't see the difference, but I'm gonna hide the group and I have this animation on one layer. The animation includes includes the cake, the bear colors and the lines and they are on one layer which is great next step is to add the uh, training animation the interpolation to that so how are we gonna do that in creates a five and above right button on that layer you want to add motion training or training animation where it doesn't matter how you want to call it uh, right button on that layer and then add a transform mask this is where the, the fun begins i guess um on that transform mask layer we're gonna animate that that transform mask there, okay? This is all we're going to do. I'm just going to use my mouse. And also, this is the hardest part that we're going to do. Uh, because, as I said, if I didn't uh, increase, uh, uh, doing motion training is kind of hard. Uh, because you have to do it manually to a certain degree. So, once you add your transform mask there, it's a good practice, at least for me, to hit control on this to save your progress. Because I, it doesn't matter which version you have, uh, obviously versions 5 and above, it, it has some bugs, okay? And we cannot go around those bugs. Sometimes they happen. Um, so, we have our transform mask layer. We did uh, save this uh, either from here, which again is the same shortcut. Um, so now, uh, we need to go to animation curves. If you don't have animation curves, Go to uh, settings, then go to dockers, and then you have the animation curves if you don't have them open by any chance. Here is a bit more or less tricky. Before you start animating that layer, basically, we're going to animate the transform mask layer, right? Uh, you need to start, you need to add the keyframes. So, I don't know, it's a good practice to add that from the beginning. So, on frame zero, which is frame one in Crypto, you're going to add a keyframe. Okay, so that keyframe, if you look on the left, has a bunch of different colors, and we also have a bunch, a bunch of different um, dots, if you will, points, again with different colors. So ideally, the red dot will be the position for the X. 
the next dot, which is the green one, is the position for the Y. Now, I know that we don't see the orange ones, and uh, obviously uh, some of the colors are repeated because they're over here, okay? They're behind this blue dot. And it's, I don't know, it's very hard for me to uh, navigate in this, um, in this graph area, if you will, um, where we're gonna create the curves. Because that's the, the thing. We, in order for you to have um, easy in or easy out motion, uh, you need to have curves to manipulate those curves and to get to the right movement. So my idea is to, uh, once the bear jumps over here, once the bear is in the air, I want to start moving that bear in the air to move uh, out of the screen, okay? So I'm going to go to that frame, which is uh, not this one, because we still see the shadow. I don't want to see the shadow. So I believe it's, yeah, it's this frame. For me at least. Um, so I'm gonna add a keyframe here again. And the final uh, frame, which is the 31st frame for our for my animation, I will go there and I'll, I'm gonna add another keyframe, okay? So as I said, I just want to, um, from this keyframe, once the, the bear is in the air, I want the bear to move to the right. So around here, maybe, maybe around here, I would like to create another keyframe. Now, you can either create another keyframe or you can just grab your transform tool, click on your transform mask layer, and start moving that transform mask layer to be maybe around here. And on here, which is the same, because we only added the keyframes and didn't remember the initial positions. From here, I just want, on this keyframe, I want the bear to be out of the screen. So I'm going to play this and see what we have. Hoping this doesn't crash. There we go. This is very literal. Um, you see that uh, because of the keyframes that, that I added around here, it's kind of slowing. Like, it's a, uh, slowly getting to this point, right? And once it gets to this point, a point immediately goes outside of the, the screen, which because because of the the frame spacing over here, the frame spacing between this point and this point is uh, shorter, it's smaller, rather than this point and this point. So that's also another way to you know navigate, I guess, your timing or to uh, you, um, to time your animation that way as well. Now, how the easy in and easy out come in? And well, yeah, well, we need to uh, be able to bend these points, right? It's really hard to, let's say, select a couple of points. And it's not like, let's say, After Effects, right? In After Effects, once you select, let's say, one or two points, and you can add to these points automatically in translation, like easy in or easy out or whatever. Here, though, it's a bit, it's not, it's not ideal. Okay, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to show you how you can do it, if you want, because that's the point of this video, yes. Um, because of this comment, thank you for your comment, sir, ma'am. So we have a lot of points, right? What you can do is to remove the rest of the points, because they can be distracting. How you can do that? Well, um, here. You can move the rest of the points. So now, you can focus on the, on the points you want. In order for you to bend these points, to add curves to these points, three points over here, this one, this one, this one. Um, I guess we can add points to this one and this one. Uh, curves, okay? I'm sorry, I'm talking nonsense right now. So to this point, I will click on this point right now, and I'm gonna add a curve, uh, aka a basic curve interpolation to this point. So what that means is if I click again and drag, I will be able to, to create a curve. So, if we create this sort of curve, and to this point, I also add a, a basic curve uh, interpolation. I can also make something like like this, so we can have this weird curve happening here. So we can go from the beginning, click play, and see what we have. So he goes backwards, and then goes forwards. And this is how you uh, make uh, curves inside the animation curves, which is kind of, you know, like, like that's how the name comes uh, with these points.
Now, this is very basic, I am fully aware, but it's also very tricky to get that ideal interpolation that you want. So you have to play around with the points you have here. You also, before you play around, you would like to uh, have an idea what exactly you want to do here. Like what, what do you want your animation to do? In this case, I have a character who is flying in the air. So what I want, I want uh, to happen with this character. Does, do I want to, the character to fly away? Do I want the character to fall down? And if the character is falling down, do I, do I want to have some easy in or easy out before him or her to fall down? So it's a bit tricky to work with this uh, um, graph that we see here. Because then again, we have a lot of points. And also, it's very really hard to select multiple points. So you have to select them um, separately. Uh, if I if I try if I try to select a couple, obviously I'm moving a point here, so I'm not I, I can't select multiple. I guess you can when you select one point and then you hit shift, select another point, and then you can add uh, curves to that. And uh, I mean, I, there's no point uh, point of me to bend this over here because I'm moving his position, okay, in the beginning. So that's not ideal. Look 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 at what's happening with him. He's now. His position is already moved, and since this is frame by frame animation, it doesn't like it, it looks stupid right now because the position is already compromised, right? Yeah, I mean, so you can't get into those. Uh, wait, I, 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 did, I don't want to do that, right? So I'm gonna stop this control and Z, uh, and you know, so it's important to um, be aware where exactly you want to add this motion training inside your frame by frame animation right in order for you not to break your frame by frame animation at the end of the day so i guess trial and error with the animation curves uh but you can make curves right you can make curves to uh, when you add this option to individual points and you can play around and get the motion you want and i hope this was helpful uh i hope i answered your question um, and I'm going to see you in the next one. Until then, make sure you subscribe, uh, you like this video if you liked it, and I, uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm having a weird time. Uh, I will continue with my coffee, and I'm going to see you in the next one.